So good afternoon. Um, so the last time we were looking at the Cholesky decomposition, and um, we closed out that discussion, summarized that chapter, and then started discussing about Hermitian and symmetric matrices. And I alluded to three three um, applications where Hermitian matrices are useful, or they arise in such applications. The first was in computing the Hessian of a matrix. The second was in the quadratic form and the third was in graph theory. So we'll continue the discussion about Hermitian and symmetric matrices. This is a fairly long chapter in Horn and Johnson. So we'll go through that chapter uh, in some detail. Um, so we begin with the basic definition that a matrix H, a matrix A of size N cross N is said to be Hermitian if A equals A Hermitian. The Hermitian is nothing but the conjugate transpose of the matrix. We say that the matrix is Q Hermitian if A equals minus A Hermitian. Okay, so that's the basic definition. Now, um, some very immediate and obvious facts are like this. Um, for any matrix A, if I consider the matrix A plus A Hermitian or A A Hermitian or A Hermitian A, they're all Hermitian matrices. Just take the conjugate transpose of this, you'll get the matrix back. Now, if uh, A is Hermitian, then A power K is Hermitian matrix for any integer power. And in fact, if A is non-singular, A inverse is also Hermitian. Then uh, if A and B are two Hermitian symmetric matrices, then the, their linear combination with real valued coefficients, AA plus BB is also a Hermitian symmetric matrix. Of course, if I take complex valued coefficients here, then it need not remain Hermitian after the linear combination. And uh, for any matrix A, if I consider the difference between A and A Hermitian, that is going to be skew Hermitian, because if I take the Hermitian of this, that becomes A Hermitian minus A, which is minus of A minus A Hermitian. These are very useful properties. We'll see that in a second. Um, and similarly, if you take two skew Hermitian matrices, then their linear combination with real valued coefficients is always skew Hermitian. And if A is a Hermitian matrix, then IA is a skew Hermitian matrix and vice versa. That is, if A is a skew Hermitian matrix, then IA will be a Hermitian matrix. Any matrix A, whether it's Hermitian or not, can be written as the sum of two matrices. The first matrix being one half A plus A Hermitian the other being one half A minus A Hermitian. So if I expand this out, I get half A plus half A, which is equal to A, and half A Hermitian minus half A Hermitian, which goes to zero. So this is equal to A. And this first part here is H of A. This is a Hermitian symmetric matrix. This second part, I call it S of A, and that is a skew Hermitian matrix. So this is called the Hermitian part of A, and this is called the skew Hermitian part of A, and this representation is unique. In other words, if I write A to be H plus S, where H is a Hermitian matrix and S is a skew Hermitian matrix, then we have that uh, half A plus A Hermitian equals H because A is H plus S plus H Hermitian plus S Hermitian and S equals minus S Hermitian. So these two terms cancel and H equals H Hermitian. So that becomes half H plus H, which is equal to H. And similarly, if I take half A minus A Hermitian, then I'll get S. So this uh, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between A and the two matrices H and S. I can't write A in any other way as the sum of a Hermitian symmetric matrix and a skew Hermitian matrix. Uh, similar result is that each A or any A in C to the N cross N can be uniquely written as A equal to S plus I T where both S and T are Hermitian. That is almost trivial from this because if S is, if I can write A as H plus S and S is Q Hermitian, I can write this S as I squared minus I squared times S and I 
that will be the same as i times i s and i s is going to be Hermitian symmetric because s is skew Hermitian. That's something we just saw. So that's exactly what is here. So I can write a as half a plus a Hermitian plus i times minus i over 2 times a minus a Hermitian. This is a skew Hermitian part of a with the factor half. And then when I multiply that by i, I get a Hermitian symmetric matrix. And then there is an i times sitting here. So this uh, coefficient is square root of minus 1, but s and t need not be real valued matrices. But the point is both s and t are Hermitian symmetric matrices. Um, and then we have that um, um, if A is Hermitian, then the diagonal entries of A are real. This is because when I take the conjugate transpose, the diagonal entries stay where they are. And so if A equals A Hermitian, the diagonal entries cannot be complex valued because otherwise, uh, or cannot have a non-zero imaginary part because otherwise the diagonal entries will not match. So um, basically in a Hermitian symmetric matrix, all the entries above the diagonal are complex conjugates of the reflected entries below the diagonal. And so if A is Hermitian, then um, we can fully characterize um, or, uh, or we can fully specify this matrix A by using n real numbers for the n diagonals and n times n minus 1 over 2 complex numbers for all the off diagonal entries. So although A has n squared entries, it has um, a Hermitian symmetric matrix has um, n plus uh, n real valued numbers and n into n minus 1 by 2 complex valued numbers that completely specify the matrix. Okay. Um, now, um, so basically, Hermitian symmetric matrices are to complex matrices as real numbers are to complex numbers. So here is uh, one result that kind of makes this point. Um, so let A be a Hermitian symmetric matrix. Then so A. Um, X Hermitian AX is real for every X in C to the N. All eigenvalues are real. And C S Hermitian A S is Hermitian for every S in C to the N cross N. Okay, they, these are pretty obvious facts. I mean, so for example, um, if you want to show A, uh, if I take uh, X Hermitian A X complex conjugate, that is the same as taking its conjugate transpose because this is after all a scalar, x Hermitian a x Hermitian and the Hermitian of the product of vectors and matrices works exactly the same way as taking the transpose but with the extra conjugate in there. And so this can be uh, x Hermitian, so this is x Hermitian coming over on the other side, a Hermitian x, this is x Hermitian, Hermitian, which is the same as x coming on the right side. And since a equals a Hermitian, this is equal to x Hermitian a x. And similarly, um, if uh, um, a x equals lambda x, and 
I'll take a unit norm eigenvector. So X emission X equals one. Then um, lambda, which is equal to lambda times X emission X, because X emission X equals one, is equal to, I'll write that as X emission times lambda X, because lambda is a scalar, and lambda X is the same as AX. So that is equal to X emission AX. Okay, and uh, this, we just showed that this is real valued. Okay, and since this is real valued, lambda is real valued. So all the eigenvec uh, eigenvalues of uh, Hermitian symmetric matrix are real valued. And finally, S Hermitian AS, if I take its Hermitian, then I get S Hermitian A Hermitian S, which is equal to S Hermitian AS. So that means that S Hermitian AS is, cement, is Hermitian for every S. So I guess these are you know pretty obvious facts, but the, they turn out to be very useful facts for later. That if you take a Hermitian matrix and you compute X Hermitian AX, that's always real value. So for instance, uh, normally if I take a quantity like X Hermitian AX, that would be complex value, and I cannot order those values. So because you can't order complex numbers, and so if I had to say minimize something like X Hermitian AX, that's a tough problem if A is an arbitrary matrix. But if I said A is a Hermitian symmetric matrix, X Hermitian AX is always real valued. So that's a perfectly valid thing to try to minimize or maximize. And uh, similarly, all the eigenvalues of A being real means that I can order the eigenvalues. I can ask which is the smallest eigenvalue, which is the largest eigenvalue and so on. And we'll see that S Hermitian AS being Hermitian symmetric also uh, will be very useful for us later. The thing that you should think about now is whether the converse is true. So suppose X Hermitian AX, you computed X Hermitian AX and found that it's real for all X in C to the N. Does it mean that A must be a Hermitian symmetric matrix? Likewise, suppose you found all the eigenvalues of A and you found that they're all real valued. Does it mean that A is a Hermitian symmetric matrix? And so on. But we'll come to that in a few minutes. Um, so what, when, when, if I consider, so I, I, I mentioned that this is a theorem that uh, illustrates somehow that uh, uh, Hermitian symmetric matrices are to complex valued, um, uh, complex valued matrices as real numbers are to complex numbers. So how, how is that? It's because suppose I take n equals one. So what is this property saying? It's saying that, so n equals one means A is just some Hermitian symmetric complex number. And if that is the case, it means that A must be a real valued number because it's conjugate transpose, which is its complex conjugate, is equal to A itself. So it means A must be a real valued number. And if A is a real valued number, X Hermitian AX is going to be this real valued number A times mod X square, and that is real for every X for every complex valued C, uh, complex valued X. Um, and if it's a one cross one matrix, whatever that A is, that is an eigenvalue of the matrix. And so it just means that A is real. And uh, this being Hermitian is the same as saying mod S squared times A is, um, is real for every S being a complex number. Okay. So I asked about the converse of these points. Here's the result about that. Um, so so I'll actually write the AIJ being its entries in this form because we'll need these entries to prove the result. Okay, then A is 
Hermitian. If and only if, at least one of the following hold. A is normal and all eigenvalues of A are real. C. S Hermitian AS is Hermitian for every S and C to the n plus n. So that is a, a normal matrix. And uh, remember that uh, all Hermitian matrices are also normal because if a matrix satisfies A, A Hermitian equals A Hermitian A, um, then it's a normal matrix. But for a Hermitian symmetric matrix, A Hermitian equals A. So A, A Hermitian equals A square, which is equal to A Hermitian A. So all properties of normal matrices, for example, that uh, eigenvectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal, uh, that there is a complete set of eigenvectors, that the matrix is unitarily diagonalizable, all of them hold for Hermitian symmetric matrices also. And um, we will use these properties extensively in the coming results, in the results that we are going to discuss. Um, okay, so now proof. So when I say that A is normal, I'm already assuming a lot about A, but in addition to it being normal, if the fact that if it's true that all the eigenvalues of A are real, then it is Hermitian symmetric. So Hermitian symmetric matrices are one special case of normal matrices. And if I assume that the eigenvalues of A are real, then this matrix A is Hermitian symmetric. Okay, so let's see how to show this result. Now, the necessity is uh, what we showed in the previous result. So it's now enough to show sufficiency. Okay, so in other words, we, okay, so let me actually uh, maybe explain this. Um, this is basic logic. Uh, so the statement of the theorem says that A is Hermitian if and only if one of these conditions hold, which means that <coughs> we need to show that uh, A is Hermitian if this condition holds, okay? And, uh, and we, we, we call that the necessary condition. And we also need to show that A is Hermitian only if this condition holds, which is that this condition is sufficient for A to be Hermitian. Um, we've already showed that if A is Hermitian, then this is true. That is the sufficiency result. Because uh, again, basic logic is that if A, the statement A, so a statement A implies a statement B, then the complement of statement B implies, that is not B implies not A. Okay, and so what we showed is that um, A being Hermitian implies X Hermitian AX is real. Okay, which means that if not B is that X Hermitian AX real for all X. Okay, this complement, which means that there is some X for which X Hermitian AX is not real, implies not A, which is
Okay, so that is so the only if part is already shown by the previous result. So we need to it suffices to show sufficiency. Namely that if this condition holds, then A is Hermitian. If this condition holds, then A is Hermitian. If this condition holds, then A is Hermitian. So basically, if uh, X Hermitian AX is real for every X in C to the N, then if I consider X plus Y Hermitian a x plus y. Now this is also real value. Okay, because of this condition here. This, if I expand it out, I get x Hermitian a x plus y Hermitian a y plus y Hermitian a x plus x Hermitian a y. Okay, now X Hermitian AX is real because again of because of this assumption again, and Y Hermitian AY is also real. Okay, so now this is real and this is real, and so this must be real also. Because if this was a complex number, there's no way that this equality would be satisfied. Okay, so now so we know now that this a quantity like Y Hermitian AX plus X Hermitian AY is always real valued, regardless of which X and Y I choose. So I can choose some in some, uh, some, I can cleverly choose X and Y and see what happens. So if I choose X equal to EK, the kth column of the N cross N identity matrix and Y equal to EJ, then what, um, Y Hermitian AX will do is that um, X AX will pick out the kth column of A and Y Hermitian times AX will pick out the jth entry of the kth column. So jth row and kth column. So that means that AJK plus similarly this will pick out AKJ. This is real. So if this is real, that means that if I consider the imaginary part of AJK, this is the negative of the imaginary part of AKJ. Okay, the imaginary parts must cancel, otherwise this wouldn't be real. Next, choose x equal to i times ek and y equal to ej then what we have is that um, if i consider uh, y hermitian ax that will give me i times ajk and x hermitian ay this i will become a minus i when I take the Hermitian here. So I get minus i a j a k j. And this is again real. Now if this is real, then it means that the, uh, the real parts of these two must cancel each other. And there is a negative sign. So this means that real part of a kj equals the real part of a jk. So if you look at, if you now look at a jk and a kj, their real parts are equal and the imaginary parts are the negative of each other. So that means that a kj is equal to a jk complex conjugate. And uh, this is exactly the same as saying A equals A Hermitian. Okay. So, um, so that proves part A. 
is that what I called it? A. Yeah. Now, um, if A is normal, then it is unitarily diagonalizable. We've seen that result already. All normal matrices are unitar unitarily diagonalizable. Which means that I can write A as U lambda U Hermitian, where uh, <coughs> lambda is a diagonal matrix containing lambda 1 to lambda n along the diagonals, which are the eigenvalues of A. And U is a unitary matrix. So now, uh, in general, basically A Hermitian would be equal to U lambda Hermitian. So this is the Hermitian of this, and then lambda Hermitian, but I can write it as lambda star because lambda is a diagonal matrix times u Hermitian. But if we if we say that um, uh, the eigenvalues are all real valued, lambda star equals lambda. And so this is equal to u lambda u Hermitian, but that is equal to a from here itself. So a is Hermitian symmetric. So this shows b. And similarly, if uh, if it's true that S Hermitian AS is Hermitian for all S in C to the N cross N, then uh, if C is true, A is Hermitian by choosing what is the yeah. identity. So if I just substitute, I mean, this is uh, S Hermitian AS is Hermitian for every S. I don't, uh, so it suffices to say that, okay, when S equals I, then uh, I get um, uh, A, A must be equal to A Hermitian. So that's it. So that's this proof. Okay, this, uh, the point I made about uh, Hermitian matrices being normal, This is an important point. So I want to actually write it here. Hermitian matrices are normal. So that means that all properties of um, normal matrices um, apply to Hermitian symmetric matrices. So for example, um, eigenvectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are uh, orthogonal. And um, uh, there is a complete set of eigenvectors that is the geometric multiplicity of every eigenvalue equals its algebraic multiplicity. So the mat Hermitian matrix can never be defective. Um, it is unitarily diagonalizable. So all these hold for Hermitian matrices. So the one result we have seen earlier was the spectral theorem for Hermitian matrices, um, which was a specialization of the result for um, uh, normal matrices. So the result says that um, A 
c to the n cross n is Hermitian if and only if there exists a unitary u and a real diagonal lambda So I could write this as real to the C n cross n such that A equals U lambda U Hermitian. So moreover, if A is real and Hermitian, but if it's real value, it just means it's symmetric. OK, so if it is real and symmetric. Um, actually, put it this way, A is real and symmetric if and only if. There exists a real orthogonal matrix. P. Again, I could write it as real, so I actually I will write it as real. And uh, uh, real diagonal lambda such that A equals P lambda P transpose. 